Okay, folks. Hey. Hey, how's it going? All right. A privilege when Amy shows up. It doesn't show up on all the other meetings I have. That's because you have too many meetings. <laughs> plain, plain and simple. I can clap I back on occasion. Oh, we have a new one, a new uh, item. All right. Uh, we seem to, that's only two minutes after. We have a pretty packed agenda though. And I don't see Jason, actually did Jason open this one? Who put the I added this there, but, I mean, we, we discussed it a few weeks ago and the PR now exists. And so I think we should, I, I would like to just force people to review it at some point. Uh, we could have that go into a discussion zone, but uh, it is an actionable thing to review now. Fair enough. Is there something to discuss to, other than read the PR and? Um, I'm just thinking maybe we leave the PR change. open for a couple of days, let people comment on it. And if there's anything that doesn't get clarity there, we could definitely discuss it here. I uh, commented on it. It seems to me that uh, there seems there is an agreement to reference just the like the one base image, the first, I suppose, the first layer of the container image, uh, the operating system that uh, is the Your from operating. statement in the final image, in other words? Well, that's different for different images, right? Uh, I think uh, Tian uh, explains it in the comments that um, you know, uh, for something like Golan Alpine, uh, the base image is Golan Alpine, which is based on uh, the Alpine image. Uh, well, yeah, it's based on the Alpine image. It gets a little more complicated with like Golan Debian, where um, it's based on like a, a Bill Pax um, derivative of the original Debian. OS image. So. Yeah, so, so I think that's why the proposal references the image digest and that makes no uh, reference to layers in any way. It's, it's, you know, this is the base image and we don't describe like, you know, the ordering or the number or anything about layers. But um, I mean, that kind of the from line kind of solves that, doesn't it? Um, you get it, you get it in the build history of the image. For Docker. I, 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 well, actually, actually, no. I take I take that back. Yeah, you don't you don't get it in the actual image uh, history, but you but if you have a you know equivalent Docker file, you can figure it out. But yeah, okay. It'll be in the manifest if it's placed there. Yeah, the the build history stuff relies on like the client populating that and knowing how to, and so I think. Kind of pushing this out of the config and into the manifest makes it more of an OCI concept than a Docker concept. If that makes sense. Yeah. What What was the conversation on the from statement in the final image versus the multi step? So, so you have source. That's you know you have an SDK. Let's say that's building it, and that's part of the output. Is that we said we we're going to capture it in an SBOM, and this was literally just. The, if the base image of this thing has been updated, we want to trigger or build. Is that was the idea? Uh, so I, I discussed this with Jason a lot, and I brought him around to my opinion about this. And I don't. I would be interested in other people having opinions because I'm not always right. Um, I think that uh, the way to solve the concern of like there are actually multiple base images is 
to express multiple base images with this annotation. And so what I would like to do if I were to write a client to take advantage of this is to say like split on a comma or something. And now I have a list of base images that well, maybe they're not base images, but there's some dependency at build time that I had on this image. Right? And so in some cases, that means you can do this magical automatic rebasing stuff. But in all cases, you can know that if any of these images I depended on at build time have changed, that means something to me and I should probably rebuild my image. And so I think that's a kind of a simple general concept that is useful and addresses the, the primary concern, which was about, you know, not all images have a single base image. What do we do? Well, there's a difference is what I'm getting at is what, what Nietzsche was kind of talking about is Golang depends on Alpine, let's say, I don't remember, it's not important. The point is, is that there's that history and that's that I'm not as worried about because if you, Take a dip, if you include the Golang one, for instance, then you are picking up the others implicitly. Right. The, it, it's a the question I was structure. more referring to is the in the multi-stage Docker files, we have all the other from statements that are used to compile your code that gets put into the ultimate. So if you have a, a an ordered not an ordered list, maybe that's the answer. If you have a common delimited list, then how do you know which is the one it's actually on? As because that's the content that's in the image versus Here's the other images that were used to build it. Yeah, I don't, think, not care. I don't think I, that was in the scope of this. Right, so so what, what I suggested, and um, I'll, I'll, I'll address Steve's point. So I, I don't wanna think about this in the context of Docker and Docker files, because I think there are many better ways to build images and this should be general and apply to those ways as well. Um, for Docker files and Docker build in particular, yeah, like you would basically just look at every from. Uh, it, basically, any image that you need to pull down should go in this list, regardless of like if the layers end up in there or if it's just used as an intermediate step for, say, getting the Go compiler to produce a binary. It, it regardless, it's a build time dependency, and so like it. If you know that it has changed, then the output of your build possibly will change. And so you can know, hey, I should probably re-trigger a build or something. Um, in, in the simple case of like, I have one base image from and I am appending to that thing, then yeah, like you can do more interesting stuff where you know the file system contents, but I don't think it's reasonable to specify that. I think this the relationship that this annotation expresses is, uh, more powerful if it's simpler. And, and the, the simpler part is I have a build time dependency on this other image. Um, and so then we don't have to talk about like, what does that mean? What does it mean for the base image to be a base image? We just kind of skirt that problem and, and it addresses multiple concerns. Uh, I forgot what Nisha asked, sorry. Oh, okay. So I am actually I actually think like the base image thing is different from the multi-stage build thing. Um, yeah, and, and so what I'm proposing is basically a, a generalization of these two things. Like, I, we could have like multiple annotations or something, but um, by simplifying the base image proposal to be less specific, we can cover both bases uh, and write more generic tooling. Um, maybe that's not the right and approach. What would you do? Because like, to Nisha's point, like, we support this with uh, tasks where there's uh, a base image dependency for the content that's in the image that's actually you know in the image you're talking about, right? That's in many ways the most. It's not the, well the only important thing, but it's considered one of the important things. There's an optional way to say I also want to be triggered if any of the other images. I call it SDK images, but that's not a good example. I can't remember what we call them. So I'm just asking, I think there's a delineation between the two. I'd be fine if we said it was just the true base image because there's no multi-inheritance, it is a single one. Um, but I think that that should be clarified and, and leaving it kind of open with should or not, it's, it, that kind of makes it hard for tooling to know what I, to do with it. I think you're, you're really tunneling in on very Docker specific things that are specific to the implementation of Docker build and not the format of the image where like, the, the produced layer could be inherited from a base image and that's fine. I mean, like we could describe that as a separate concept, but in terms of what tooling you wanna build, I don't know that it's interesting. Like 
we could lie. I don't know. It, it just, it doesn't seem like a useful distinction to make to me, but I, I would like to understand why that's a useful distinction because for the use cases I have in mind, um, just knowing that it is in this set of images I depend on, whether they're base or SDK is, in, is useful enough. Um, and, and you can, so you can I determine can... which shared layers there are by you know, querying the registry and say, oh, this one has these layers and I, so I do too. So you can, you can figure that out without, you know, having that specifically called out. So one of the things that um, we do in turn is uh, try to figure out from where the from where the layers are imported and where the layers were built. Um, and to that effect, it would be useful to know like which digests are the the base, which digests of this whole image corresponds to the base image. And I don't know whether this um, addition of annotations, I don't know if the schema allows for that. Uh, do you? Have any comments yeah, I, on that? I, I, um, I think the original one was exactly what you're saying. And um, I guess I, I, I don't like, there is no such thing as a based image in like OCI, right? Like that's not a thing that exists. Um, it, it is a implementation detail of like a Docker build. Like you can build Docker images with Bazel that don't understand like there's not really a base image right you can get an equivalent thing but there's no notion concretely of what a base image is we could define one and maybe we want to do that as part of this proposal but like i think it's moved in a better direction we're describing relationships between images instead of like having to describe exactly what it means to have your in bottom layers correspond exactly to the in layers of a separate image um, it uh, I don't really want to get in the business of like documenting how Docker build works in the OCI spec, but maybe. No, no I, I think you should separate you the Docker build. I totally agree with you. But um, I, it's, so I, like that's what the issue is for. It's good to capture that. I, I did realize it is 13 days old. I thought it was just added, but it was just added to this. I mean, I, I think maybe give it a bit, like now you brought focus. That's great. Maybe I, I would think that maybe some clarification, the whole should be common delimited. If you're including multiples, I think it's a must. Like otherwise, tooling doesn't really know how to, to deal with it uh, consistently. Yeah, my, my aim was to just get people to review it. And so uh, we don't have to discuss it now. We could discuss it next week. I'm buying the table this for now. Yep, yeah, that's cool. I just, there's a lot of stuff on the agenda and we, we try yeah. to save the section for like, you know, a thumbs up, thumbs down kind of thing. So, all right. Uh, the next one was yours also, John. So the data field. Hi. What was um, the topic there? Yeah, let me find this link. Um, so I talked to Steve. Not you, Steve, the other Steve, uh, Steve-o. Uh, and, and I was asking like, what is this reserved data field? And do, is it what I expect it to be? And it turns out, yes. Um, so there are some use cases where like, I have a descriptor that points to a very small amount of data. And it is a shame that I will have to do a separate hop to go fetch that data, say 100 bytes. Um, so I think the intention of this reserved data field was to just embed in the descriptor the content that is described by the descriptor so that you can just have inline data and not have to do this extra hop. And so this is just, an, it would be a performance optimization if we spec this out. And I think it'd be pretty simple to spec it out, but I'm interested in other people have looked at this or thought about this and wanted to bring it to the attention of folks. I would like to send a proposal that we define what this data field is for, and then I can start using it uh, in other places. I have some concerns around like, you know, do for for a registry, right? If this descriptor has data embedded, does the registry expect people to have also pushed that data to the to the registry blob store? Um, it, it would be nice if you could have like the foreign layers concept applied here. Uh, but th there are a lot of things to discuss if we open a proposal. But I just wanted to talk about that briefly and see what other people thought. I mean, I like it. This solves. Part of the problems we've been trying to, although annotations might have solved it, is this is the, in a notary v2 case, how do I know who signed, you know, which, who signed that particular signature so I can filter on it. So, and this was the thing we've been talking about in the payload response, like, do I need to return a whole manifest just because one of those elements is interesting. Um, in a notary v2 case, you could say that the data element was used for this. I think 
the question will be, like, what is the max size? Can I stick a string of bytes that represents a VM in here? Um, so there's probably some constraints we'd probably have to put on this, but I, I like yeah. it. Yeah, for, for small data, it seems to make sense, but what small data means is context specific. Um, I don't know if you heard more from, I'm, I'm assuming you were talking to Stephen Day, but yeah, was the proposal here that you'd have the data there and then you wouldn't have a, a digest for that descriptor at all? Or you would have you, you a would. that matches the bytes of the data as well? Exactly. Yeah, so the, it would that would just be embedded content that would be exactly as it would have been if you had to fetch it from a blob store. If you're then like looking at a, a like an index that contains that descriptor, would the would you compute the digest of the index by taking out that data field? Uh, no, I don't think so. Uh, so like, it's nice that this is in the descriptor and not like somewhere else. Uh, I get what you're get, getting at. Like for a canonical index manifest, it would be nice if the embedding of data in a descriptor didn't affect the digest. Yeah. Um, I think that gets into like very tricky territory and I'd like to avoid it. And just, you know, if, if the author of this artifact decided to embed the data, then that's, that's what the artifact is. It has embedded data. Um, for some cases, like with the listing proposal I have where I want to return a set of descriptors, in that case, we could leave it up to the registry whether or not like they're going to embed some data in, in that return type. But um, yeah, I don't think we should get into the business of canonicalizing the artifacts. We should just be dumb and say, ah, oh, yeah, so this, these bytes, I can move them around and not think about it. Thanks. So just so I understand, the data element is computed as part of the digest. Of no, the, it's outside yes. of it. Well, right. So it's a pointer, right? And so we have it's it's data about the thing being pointed to, not data about the thing that is pointing to that thing. So, like it would if you have say a manifest list, uh, this is multi arch specific, and you wanted to embed all the manifests in that so that you could do it in one hop instead of two. Um, that decision whether or not to embed it would affect the digest of this outer manifest list, but not the inner manifest. And so it, it's not a like optional thing that right. you can ignore. It definitely affects the content. But only in the manifest list, like I'm trying to visualize this now. So if I have a manifest, the manifest, the digests that are in that manifest are the blobs. Have to look, look this up. Anyway, so, I, so why don't you make a proposal, John? Because yeah, I'm gonna open an issue. Um, I just wanted to float that by to see if anyone thought it was a terrible idea before I open an issue. Wouldn't that mean that different uh, digests may indicate different uh, tools looking for different uh, it, descriptors? It certainly affects the reproducibility of certain things, right? Like if this is a decision you make as a client, whether or not to embed the data of the thing you're pointing to, um, then like I'm not going to produce the same artifact as someone who doesn't try to embed the data. But uh, like in terms of once you've pushed a thing and now you're referencing it, like there's no problem there. Like it's not like trying to embed a signature in the manifest. It's, you know, we're, we're pointing to stuff already in the DAG and now this, this node in the DAG is slightly different than a node in the DAG that is equivalent, but doesn't embed that data. And we already have that problem, right? With JSON formatting and all kinds of things uh, and ordering of keys. And so it doesn't really add a new class of problem. It's just, it, you should, I don't think it's really a problem. It's just like some people expect that they're going to produce exactly the same content as Docker every time. And that is a terrible assumption to make. And so I'm happy for this assumption to be broken in another way. Uh, what about, if I look at uh, a sorry, Ganesh, go ahead. Well, I mean, yeah, it, it, I'm concerned about like just general like identifiability. Um, how would a how would a person know that? How would a person know the difference between uh, you know one image and the other image when the only thing different about them is that the data that data field is in one versus not in the other and not in the other. I, I would argue they're different artifacts, right? Um, we have this problem already with compression, right? If I gzip with fast compression and you gzip with best, 
or if you gzip with z standard, like they're functionally the exact same thing, but they have different digests. Similarly, like if you add a label or an annotation to a manifest, you've changed it and it, it has a new, it expresses a new thing, even though they are equivalent. And so I think this falls into that class of problem where you know, we are adding data in the DAG and so parts of the DAG are affected. But like, it's nice that I can distinguish between a manifest list with embedded data and a manifest list without embedded data, right? They're different things, even though they're reasonably equivalent. So just to make sure we're saying the same thing, because I thought I heard you say like a registry might add something to that. If I submit a digest, sorry, a manifest that has a data element in the descriptor, that changes the digest of that manifest. So that yeah. way, so as long as I submit it with the data, it goes into the registry, it never gets changed, it comes out of the registry, it never gets changed, then life's good, right? The, yeah. the digest all computes, everything's good. Did I not hear you so, right that yeah, i didn't yeah. say something but, at the what, registry could insert what something? i'm saying so in in many places i think descriptors are useful and i think we should use them more so for the listing proposal i have um instead of just returning like a digest or something that that would make sense i think we should return an entire descriptor for each manifest um and so in that case because like the you're not making any claims about like the the listing response content that's dynamic and like the registry controls that um, the registry could make a decision to embed some data in that response or like even with the link stuff, right? Like as long as it's not part of the content addressable store, um, clients and registries have some freedom about whether or not they embed the data and it shouldn't be a problem. But for stuff that is in the content addressable store, like, you know, it has to stay with that digest. You can't manipulate it in any way, even if okay. it would be nice. But like I, listing I, tags. I encourage back to go back to the, you know, this is the, the caption of the requirements thing, because I agree, just yeah. returning a descriptor isn't enough information. If I have a collection of signatures, I don't know which one I care about. So now I've got to fetch each one of them. That's an expensive in operation. So that's why we're in this right. longer debate. Do I return the whole manifest? Which, by the way, I realized I forgot to include the digest of that manifest. So I'll have to fix that. But the um, Jason in the chat. <laughs> I always love Josh to add the comedic uh, element to it. Um, anyway, I, I guess just write it up. I think it's a good idea. I, uh, yeah, I will. Cool. Anybody else on that one? Just I'm, I'm trying to move on to things we can do quick. Oh, we skipped the content encoding discussion, but uh, it's a long one. I mean, oh. we can go into Josh's thing and then go back to that if we have time. <laughs> I don't want to monopolize the entire, uh, well, Josh's thing is my thing as well. So I, it's just John's OCI meeting, I guess. Um, yeah, I'll, that's, I'll cede the floor uh, to Josh. <laughs> no, but yeah. Let's share with Josh. Go ahead, Josh. Okay, yeah, so both of my things are pretty quick so we can go back to the content encoding thing. Um, so yeah, it looks like John actually has um, resolved this issue in the past 30 minutes, so um, I went ahead and improved this PR, but it's basically related to the deprecation. I guess we're not going to deprecate it. We're going to just reorder it. Do you want to, does that make sense, John? Am I describing that? Correctly? Um, so the, the first thing was to reorder it just because I, for aesthetic reasons. Um, but the more important change is that second commit where, uh, I clarify that a client should uh, expect to receive a 201 or a 202, and those mean different things. So um, I, I get them confused in my head when I I'm not looking at it. But um, one of them okay. is, oh, yes, I, I accept this single request monolithic upload. You're done. And the other means, I don't know what you're talking about. Please send me a put request with the actual content over here. And, and so clients must respect that. Um, I guess registries must return the correct code and clients should do what they want to. No, I, yeah, I, I looked at that. Um, we can, we can carry on the PR. If you could, though, there's an open PR from uh, Wang from uh, Harbor Project, and I think it's related to this. If you can see if those changes reflect what you're, um, proposing because can you link to that, it somewhere? yeah uh, it's I put it in the chat or I put it in the 
I linked to that PR. I'll put it in the uh, D2. Um, because, yeah, so this and that, and I just added a thing to switch our branch names to use main. Um, I think that's all we, I think that's all we're going to do for the final um, release before 1.0. So thanks for thanks for doing that PR. Yeah, I figured I owe you it. Go ahead, John. I would <laughs> no, I was gonna I was gonna do it shortly if I thank you. What's, um, what's the change do? Just reordering, John? No, so the, the change is, uh, if you read between the lines, this is expected behavior already, but it's not super clear. Um, so the, the issue com has a lot of discussion around this, but basically um, you should not expect that every registry supports a single post monolithic upload because they don't. Um, some registries may support that, but a registry should return I, one of these two status codes to indicate if they support it or not. And so for registries that do support this single request upload path, um, the, I think it's a 201 is like, yeah, I read it, it's stored, here's the content or whatever. Uh, registries that don't support single monolithic uploads, nicely, if, you, if they just pretend it is a post then put flow, um, th they can completely ignore this and just do what they expected the client to be doing as long as the client sees that response code and says, aha, a 202. I need to follow the location header to send a put. Um, it is just making it more explicit that like some registries will return a 202 here and you need to handle that as a client. Okay, so you're just adding a little more context to this particular portion of the yeah. text. In the Personally, commit, I'd like to- reordering it? Yeah, th so there's two commits. One is to reorder it because like the method that no one supports and no clients use should not be the first method we describe. Um, okay. And I think that's uncontroversial. Rather than rather than reorder it, I, I might have just added a note comment <laughs> saying I, that. I was trying to figure out why are we moving things around? <laughs> yeah, I, I split it up into commits so you can actually see the change. But, but I, personally, I'd like to remove it, but I don't know that I can get everyone on board with that. And so if well, I can well, remove well, it, I, think well, last, I thought we I, did I would it like to remove, remove it and just mark it reserved like we did with catalog. I mean, we we talked about that in the call, but like uh, Derek mentioned on the, my issue that like the best behavior is probably to do what I've done. Um, I can remove it, or but I I don't know. I, we don't have consensus, and so if there is consensus that we should remove it, please comment on the PR issue, and I'm happy to do that. I was under the understanding that we agreed to remove. Um, I, Maybe at least is, we do it in the test so people can pass the tests who don't support it. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, th that's one of the like original points of this, right? Is the test, I was like, this test doesn't make sense. And then I realized why. Um, and so this clarifies that yeah, a little bit. Fair, fair enough, yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, so I'm, I'm having to follow up. At least for removal. here, do we think remove with reserved? Just like we did with catalog. Well, the thing so is, it, it has been acceptable in the past and now we're we're pulling it out of the specification, right? So is catalog. Right. I, I, this is I'm happy with a little more common, right? Yeah. Yeah. Is it? That's what I'm asking. I'm not... some, some registries do support this. I mean, catalog in particular is like something we want to replace with a different mechanism yeah. and like no one should have so, been using in the first place. But people do use yeah, this a little that, bit. That's what I'm saying, John. I think it's I think it's valid to you know, to, to, to say this is not the preferred way, right, to push. But yeah, I, I think if they're going to push it this way, I'd rather have a specification explaining how. Um, yes. Okay. And and my PR, I tried to, if there's a way to make it more explicit, I, I was reading through the RFC about how to write an RFC, uh, and I, I wasn't sure about the language specifically. But um, if there's a way to make it clear what I'm intending, that, like, clients should probably expect not to have this be supported. And here's what to do if it's not. And here's how registries express that it's not supported. Um, yeah, if I think that can plain language clear. is probably OK, as long as you put it in notation format. Yeah, yeah. I, I would love someone who's more familiar with that to review this, because I'm not 100% confident that what I've written is correct. Um, OK, I'll give it a review. Thanks. Yep. 
I, I'd also, I like the idea of moving it down for, for people who just don't want to read too much. It's, you want to read the thing that until you hit something and you start executing it, if they start executing on that one, because it's the first in the list, that's, you know, I don't think that's the intent we want to send here. So I, I'd also already, you know. put it down the bottom of the list that people probably won't even get to anyway. And if they do, if they read that far, then they should read the annotate, the, the extra text that says you probably don't want to do this. All right, I think that's that one. We're good. Yes. Um, yeah, so uh, just on that topic while I'm there, um, I dropped a link for the milestone for the RC and that's uh, literally one of three items. So we're really, really close. Um, two weeks ago, we had merged um, a new README in distribution spec as well. Um, there's an intro section in there that I, uh, I'm particularly, uh, <laughs> it's new content I'm particularly proud of, but it kind of goes through the relationship between the three specs and artifacts, which um, for a lot of people coming in to OCI, they're throwing all these terms. And so um, Jimmy, had mentioned that he'd maybe like to see something like that across all the specs. But um, if you haven't seen the new README, check it out. It's based on uh, the image spec. Um, and then the other topic, really quickly, we brought up a few weeks ago um, the ORUS project and whether it's been an ongoing year long plus, um, will, it, will it be open containers, official code, and things like that? Um, been having a lot of conversations with Steve and others, and it sounds like the general uh, thought is that it should not be open containers and that going forward, uh, the open containers organization should mostly be readme spec stuff and less code. Um, Yeah, I don't know if anyone wants to <laughs> elaborate on that, but we've kind of, we've been talking about potentially uh, getting it into CNCF as a project so that it's um, a little bit more official because it's one of the building blocks of the Helm integration. So um, yeah, there's, there's a lot uh, there, but um, I have been talking to Alexa, um, and we have been discussing potentially baking what the Scopio uh, copy functionality does into Emochi, um, and then potentially once that uh, becomes more mature, maybe that can be an open containers uh pure distribution spec client implementation so um we just said we don't want code in oci so i'm not sure why we'd add more um yeah that's a good point i think the the thing about Aurus is it has like kind of a unique api and i don't know doesn't matter i i do we not want a reference implementation at all? Uh, I don't know. I, uh, I have opinions about this that might elucidate at least my my reaction. Um, I always have opinions about stuff, sorry. Uh, so like as it stands, it is impossible to make or as uh, that is a reference implementation because there is no way to push to a registry uh, and it, it, that complies with the standard because registries that allow you to push require you to do authentication. And so like sure. you can't, right? And so if we, there's a dependency for like ORAS to be a reference implementation of anything of us to describe authentication. I, I mean, you know, technically you can make a registry that doesn't require authentication, but no one's gonna run that and no one's gonna use that. Um, but all registries support basic actually, auth, you know, like ORAS works today for this. Yeah, mo most registries actually do support some flow where it can be on authentic. The basic auth flow. So let's make it a, let's, let's, I don't want to go down too deep into the, to the tunnel here, but 
let's make it a priority after 1.0 to get to basically codify the auth that everyone already knows how to use and has been written into several clients because it's, it is an implicit spec, you know? Um, and there's a bunch of code doing the same stuff everywhere. I was actually trying to figure out whether, you know, the Docker login uh, method uses basic auth or not. And it depends. Yeah, that's that's the thing, right? I I don't know whether I don't know what kind of authentication a registry is using unless I query the right uh, endpoints and and get the information that I need. Like the the Docker login uh, way is, I mean, it's great for usability, but it's not really that good for understanding, you know, what what the authentication method is. Uh, I would like to see something that is like a reference implementation of how a client gets to authenticate against a registry that's following the, following the distribution spec. So here's, we've, so Josh convinced me that there is a timely sensitive sensitive to this. So I've been kind of putting it on the back burner because I know we've got some changes coming. I'm not sure where the PR is sitting right now, but there is some stuff coming in for us that we'll try to do some of this cleanup that we can factor it out. Um, Cause that was one of the action items from the last time, but there seemed to be enough pushback on it that to me, I felt like it's more important it gets under a foundation because the Deus Labs is, has always been just a staging ground and it's been sitting there too long and it, it is becoming a problem. So if we can't find a clear path to put it in OCI, then let's go to CNCF. That's what it's there for. I mean, it's to me, CNCF is overkill because it's never meant to be a, a large community of people contributing to ORAS. A lot of people should be consuming ORAS as to work with registries. And that's why we thought OCI was the right answer. We can't seem to find consensus on that. And I do think it's more important to get it into a foundation. So I, I'm, you know, to me, I thought OCI was the better fit. If we can't get that happen, then it's more important that it gets under a foundation, um, which I don't, you know, I don't know how much this call is as relevant in the sense that this is technically OCI. Um, so if, I guess the, the question is more, is there anybody here who would like to see it brought into OCI? And is there a, a set of things that we could do that would make that uh, a reason why I wouldn't go to CNCF? That's a reasonable conversation, but I, I hear more conversations why we shouldn't. I didn't understand why it couldn't go to the CNCF. It could. Oh, it absolutely could. The question is, is there the re oh sorry. The reason I it's not that I couldn't go to CNCF. When we scoped this in the TOB several months ago, um, the discussion was OCI is more around the specs that are there and you know, does this conform to those specs? It pulled in some other libraries and other things that wasn't intentional, we can factor that out. But the idea is in, in OCI, we're not gonna get like a lot of marketing coverage. We're not looking to be a tile on some big CNCF kind of wall. It's a few projects in there meant for a few people to use in a lot of different places. CNCF, there's a lot of people using a lot of projects and there's a lot of marketing budget and coverage you automatically get talks at conferences and so forth. That's kind of overkill, I think, for what we're trying to do with ORAS. Um, but it, it needs to go somewhere. And if we can't get it here, being this is the OCI call, then let's go the other. Well, what do you think now that distribution is going to CNCF about it being basically a library and example client within the distrib distribution project? The problem with the distribution, so I love that distribution went over. So it's not that there's a problem related to that. It's that um, it's really for the spec, it, this distribution is also a, a, you know, a, an opinionated view of the distribution spec. I don't know if that's a right way to say it. So I don't know if it should go under distribution because people will use it having nothing to do with distribution. It's really related to the distribution and, and uh, artifact specs as opposed to the distribution implementation. 
So I don't know if it makes sense to go into the distribution project as opposed to it could sit alongside it as another pro another project in CNCF, but I didn't see it being in distribution. Yeah, I, I was just more thinking that in that sense, you don't have to worry about, you know, carrying sort of a whole project for something that, you know, is mostly consumed by, well, like you said, there's a wide array of people who probably want something, uh, you know, a small library like that, but, it, you know, maybe doesn't rise to the sort of breadth of, of a full CNCF project. And the, the, the question for me is whether the CNCF will question, why isn't it back in the OCI, <laughs> right? I mean, Chris did kind of direct us there. I was like, look, he, he also saw it. Look, it needs to be somewhere. If you can't, and he saw the struggles we were having to get it in OCI. So he was actually the one to suggest CNCF. It doesn't mean he's the only vote that you know, yeah, proves so, it. But. So, so, I think I, so I think it needs to have clear articulation as to what uh, why it should belong in CNCF and why it doesn't belong in OCI in order to be successfully accepted there. So I can speak to some of that. I've tried to stay quiet and let you all kind of work through things. I would take a look at the sandbox proposal and see if that's a really good fit for what it is that you guys are currently looking at now. Um, and the reason that I say that is because we have another sandbox inclusion meeting um, end of the month. So March 23rd, got some time. Um, not a ton of time, but enough to be able to look and see, would this be a fit right now? And what other things need to change in order to be able to say, yeah, we can make this a sandbox project. I think I and agree I with you. That, I, okay, I, go ahead. I think I agree with you that it could be a sandbox project, but does it have enough broad use or applicability that it could graduate beyond that? I would, um, I don't know what, uh, how do, how do, how does one advocate, I mean, not advocate, but, uh, you know, um, prove wide use? Does, does it require, does it need to have like a certain product associated with it, a certain number of companies that adopt it? Um, yeah, how they, does it, 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 how it, does so, so this this isn't the CNCF call, but the the CNCF uh, talk definitely has criteria to move it to, into an incubation phase and then to a graduated phase, and you know it would it would have to pass through that review in order to move forward. Yeah, um, I was just wondering, like, how does a sandbox project, you know, uh, prove the case when they are a sandbox project, like nobody knows about them. Oh, okay. Sorry, that's the question here. Yes, I can definitely answer some of that too. Um, part of that is that the sandbox project applies for being able to move to incubation um, and they go through a thorough due diligence process led by one of the TOC sponsors. Like they, they, a lot of things need to happen for that to be able to come together. I'm happy to be able to talk about that like when folks are ready to. Um, so I see where you're going with this, and I hope to be able to be helpful here, but I'm kind of going to steer back towards, should this be an OCI or CNCF? Uh, I get the feeling that OCI aims to just be a specification without any reference implementation of the specification. Um, but I wonder if uh, it can also be, you know, uh, it can also contain some supplemental tools for folks to work with the specification. So I'm coming from this from like my work with SPDX and this is what that project has, which is, it is first and foremost a specification, but there are tools to allow folks to work with that specification, uh, convert it into different formats, um, and uh, you know, just generally prove out whether the specification works for their needs. 
Does that sound like something that Oras might fit into? Josh, you want to, you've been the one pushed on this the most. Do you want to speak to that? Um, I, I don't know. I, I personally would like as a Go developer to import open containers something and push something. And that's that was my whole uh, push to get it as part of an open containers project and part of why I want to get something in there and why I'm talking to Alexa and this um, Umochi stuff. I just as I just want to build tools in Go and have something that's like the official thing. And that's uh, that's really that's really my motive with that. I I have opinions here. Um, I think this is complicated software. Like there are some opinionated things that happen. Um, and as such, like I don't know that there can be like a kind of straightforward, like official implementation of this um, exactly, right? Like I spent the, the spec itself has a lot of like optional, you know, may, whatever. There's, there's all kinds of things that clients could do differently. And I don't know, and just like politically, like there are a handful of these that already exist owned by various orgs. There's like the Docker stuff, the container D stuff, the Red Hat stuff, the Google stuff everybody has a registry client. And so like, to your point, it would be nice if there was an official one, but you know, the implementations are different for a reason, like different orgs have different opinions about how this software should work. And I don't, I don't know that it makes sense to pick a winner, like, like, or as uses container D. And so we would by default be picking a winner if it is a default implementation of anything. And I don't know. I, I don't know what I'm trying to express, but does that make sense? Like, there's some kind of like stickiness here that isn't straightforward to me. I know what you mean, and I, you know, fully understand that this is that code is using Container D, which has history. It's coming out of Microsoft, which has politics involved, um, and part of why. I suggest that perhaps Umochi being a now official project, can we collaborate on a pure implementation written from scratch? And so there, you remove all of these politics. Um, and then once that becomes mature, then everyone's tools can maybe move towards that, you know? Um, I would be interested in that project existing. Uh, I don't know that we want to like buy fiat to declare it under OCI, but I mean, I would contribute to that probably. Um, Here's the basic thing. We just, we need, like, and I put this in the, the chat session. I don't think we would have seen so much adoption of artifacts with all these different types if Josh and Shiwe didn't put this thing together over Christmas a couple of years ago. It has since expanded because it would never had an official charter and everything. So there's been a bunch of stuff that got contributed to it. So it's it's kind of a, a bunch of stuff in it now. And you know, it'd be nice to get that cleaned up. But at the end of the day, the success of it has been that I can push and pull um, artifacts, non-container artifacts into a registry. And as far as I can tell, every registry I've seen has now been able to support that because they basically supported it anyway. It's just there's now a documented you know, way to do it. And there's a CLI, sorry, there's a set of APIs that enable it. And the beauty is only the artifact authors need to implement it, right? The end user that uses Helm doesn't need to know anything about this. They just use Helm and it just works. So if we can you know, scope it down to that minimal set of stuff, you know, I think that's, that has always been the intent. But it, to John, to your point is that it, there's a certain set of capabilities that do need to exist across all registries, or they just, they shouldn't be called registries. I mean, they, whatever you want to call them, but we need the whole idea here we're trying to get to is we can build tooling that consistently works across all registries. The Docker client happens to work across all registries because there's an expectation on that for push and pull, for instance, or you know, whatever APIs. 
we want to be able to do things for other artifacts. We want to be able to enhance that experience, for instance, you know, the tags and the manifests and the other stuff, so that you can see this ecosystem work across a set of registries. We get ourselves wrapped up in what we may or should or must, and it makes it very difficult for anybody to write anything consistently. Um, yes. Um, yeah, I, th I think the, the, you know, purism aside, the, the project has had traction and, you know, the Helm, the Helm implementation rolled out like in 2019 and we're finding that it's, uh, being supported like all over the place and it seems to just work. And that's thanks to the, the, you know, how well container D's libraries uh, support all these different registries and edge cases. So I don't think we should throw it in the garbage, but I think we should throw it into a foundation so that it gets uh, the love. And if that means it's not its own project, because I agree it doesn't need its fanfare and can we stuff it into a folder in container D or distribution and be done with it and move on? Um, anyway, I'm gonna time check myself. Uh, yeah, I don't I have, I have nothing, like, I have I'm nothing sure more to add. Reference really. implementation wouldn't work, thing, John. So. I mean, like if, uh, and what I'm bugs, hearing right? is, is there are bugs encoded in clients. And so if we do a reference implementation, we have lost what Josh was saying, the, the history of container D being backward compatible and broadly compatible. So like if if we have a pure reference implementation that doesn't take into account how broken most registries are under the hood, um, it's not useful because it doesn't work. And without accounting for those the reality of writing a client that works across all the registries. Oh, that, that's a that's a fair context, but I think the, the the point of the distribution specification and any reference implementation is to actually have it be functional for existing clients. Yeah, if we fail right. that, then 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 we failed as a project. It's not it's not that the reference implementation has failed. Um, by the way, right, yeah. Run C has the same issue today, right? Run, Run C is the de facto standard. The runtime specification doesn't specify everything needed to do a container runtime to get the actual details super you have to look at the code. And I think that's what we're all hoping for, right? Is that we have some code to look at so we can find out the details that aren't, you know, specified in the spec. Yeah. I I have a list of them in my head and then an issue I filed, but like there's there's a lot of stuff that is not specified that you need to know to write a reference implementation. And so like, yeah, maybe it would be a useful exercise to improve the spec to try to write one and we'd stumble immediately. Yeah, we, we tried to do that. John, I don't know if you were there at the beginning. You know, it just, it gets, it gets really hard. People get upset about the choices that are, that were made in the past. And you end up with this, you know, you can't move forward thing. So. I'm also frustrated with the state of reality. I mean, it, it's, it's, it's sad, but if you want a clean spec, then it, it's not going to be useful if it doesn't express the stuff. Not with the reference right. implementation. Right. Is, and yeah. we can try to improve the state of the world, and that's going to take a while. Or we can try to embed the knowledge you need to write a working client. But then it's not a clean spec. I don't. I don't know. I don't know what to do. It's hard. I have no opinions that are useful. I'm just complaining. <laughs> yeah, but I do. I do think we need a, a, a ref. We need. We need a reference implementation for you know. The, and, and that was really why I believe the Docker guys initially, you know, put, push forward their their spec to you know to us. Say, hey, hey, go you know go handhold this a little bit. Um, and then, you know, the good thing is, like you say, you know, distribution is now in CNCF, so uh, a lot of potential there. But it needs to be refactored <laughs> and cleaned up. It was seems to be. I think we want to do that regardless. I mean, it's just a matter of people spending the time uh, to to get to it. Um, that's always been a challenge with these things. Look, I you know the the fact that there's even an implication there's some politics around or as in Microsoft because it's there. Like that that's the main thing I just want to absolutely avoid. So I, unless somebody's going to unless somebody really wants it to be an OCI, and I keep on hearing people 
you know, keep on pushing back for various reasons, whether you want to argue with them or not. That that's the part that I just don't want us to get caught up in. So to me, I I'm fine going forward with CNCF and if it sits in, you know, um, uh, I would say incubation, you know, for uh, a while, at least it's under a federation that uh, has some governance around and there's no, no implication of politics whatsoever. This was never intended to be a Microsoft project that we happen to occasionally take contributions from others. It has always been a true open source project that it, it, we were 50% of the contributors. It was basically Josh and Shiwei. And there's now others. And it's great. And we want to support more of that. So, yeah, of course, it's a grow. So, uh, Josh, I think let's, I, I, my suggestion is go through the CNCF process and let's see what that turns out. Um, I'm going to defer to you on that since uh, it's a Microsoft license. Um, somebody stuck a string in there after we, we created it, and I'm, uh, I'm not um, exactly sure why, but it's. But I, I'm, I'm glad we had this nice uh, conversation, but I was mostly with that point just trying to report back on what's uh, what's been going on behind the scenes in the shadow organization of, of Aura, so. Um, right. I would request that uh, interested folks who would like to comment on the content encoding stuff, take a look, because I think it's an interesting suggestion and would fix the Z standard problem uh, that we have not solved yet. And so please take a look at that link. Why don't you move that? that that's a bigger discussion and it's a good discussion. Why don't you move that to next week, John, and we'll We'll make that the first big item for next week. I did want to point out to you, John, there, there's an issue on the uh, you know, labels and annotations having a physical limit. So when you start adding you know, commas and lists, whoops, <laughs> 409 yeah. is the current limit on most of the runtime. So Yeah, I, I think possibly some of this stuff becomes an S-bomb or something. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Well, it will be S bombs. The question is, do you have to have an S bomb to get this basic capability? And and I think that's the part that I was I was trying to remember. Maybe we should just go back and listen to the video. I was trying to remember. We, we came away with some way to determine the separation between the from statement for the image, and I know it's Docker based, but what are what are the other layers that this thing came from, versus the things that went into it? And for better or worse, the multi stage Docker file is used pretty popularly. So having some conversation availability for it so you don't have this you know list of strings which um make, you know I, I guess i'm not a fan of the list of strings in this one i'm more a fan of there is one base image this is the thing you should absolutely trigger if there's other additional things that you might optionally want to rebuild based on i think that's great and separating those two out would be my suggestion but i'll add that to the pr and um we're good for this week cheers everybody Thanks, folks.